and that will make you host. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. It's four o'clock, and I will call the meeting to order. Where are we? Establishment of a quorum. Lee. Here. Mickey. Here. Marsha. Here. I'm Marianne. Hello. <laughs> Here. <laughs> right out of the swimming pool. <laughs> oh, you made it. Yes, I did. <laughs> and no Reagan. Okay. We had material as well, Henry, from Allison King. Both Reagan and Allison sent me stuff in the last few days. It's very but good. obviously, they're not here. Okay, we've got a quorum. Um, there's my cheat sheet here for remote participation. There we are. Good afternoon. This open meeting of the Town Area Plan Work Group is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting, I don't see any public, so it will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Town Area Plan Work Group is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join for Zoom meetings. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are anticipated or participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recordings. And I think that takes care of that. Okay. Um, approval of the agenda. Any discussion? Okay. Motion to approve. I move to approve the agenda. Marianne. Marianne. Second. Second. Mickey seconds. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. Approval of the draft minutes from August 6, 2024. Any discussion? Okay, motion to approve. Marsha, that's good. Yes, that is there a second? I wasn't at the meeting, so I'm not sure I should second it. Yeah. Marianne, how about you? Okay. Thank yes, you. I'll second it. <laughs> uh, just just for information since i take the minutes we could presume that there was automatically a motion but i just thought it was um more responsible to let two other people make the motion and second it <laughs> i was ready Agreed. to jump in if mickey hadn't or mary if marianne hadn't okay um all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. opposed Okay, we got minutes. Um, who's up? Allison, and she's not here. There's no Allison. So what's next? Marsha, how are you making out with housing? Um, I emailed that to you about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> okay. That's excellent. <laughs> All right, Marsha. We, uh, I'm Maybe. just, I'm just jumping around here. And... I don't yet have 
Let's make sure I'm in the right box. Okay. I'm back. Marsha, I don't have an email from you. No, that's because I did not email to you. I emailed to Henry. All right. I thought that was, thought that was the proper route to take. That's just fine. That's just fine. Henry will forward it to me. Uh, I will do that right now. And no rush, Henry. I've got a house full of people. And the uh, pe people begin to melt away tomorrow. So tonight's ceremonial dinner is in the upscale restaurant called the Sandbar. Because we've got lots of we've got lots of teenagers here. Okay, I have Marsha's email and don't uh, Marsha over the next few days as I start cleaning this stuff up, I will add it into the draft. I will save it with a new name and uh, forward it to everybody. And yeah, uh, by, by the way, when I forward, I use the blind carbon copy, the BCC, so that uh, it looks like it's been sent to you individually, but nobody uh, is able then to reply all. Right. Lee, it's headed your way. Um, Thank you. If you can add that this weekend, um, I've got a meeting with Leslie on Monday. I can, I, 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 I can do that, Henry, as I say. Some of the folks are going tomorrow morning um, and certainly tomorrow afternoon or Sunday, I can get it. I may even get the minutes. I just turned out the Cemetery Commission minutes from Wednesday. That's not going in the notes either. So is it your intention to do today to do the housing component? If we can, yeah. Okay. Um, Oh, I think okay. I noted on the email that um, that I had not um, that even though Mickey and I started out strong, you know, Mickey has not reviewed this. So, Mickey, please don't feel that you have to agree with what's written because <laughs> because I wrote it. <laughs> um, it certainly has a lot of what we've been working on, but then there's other two. Um, so do you have that yet or? I do not have it. Henry, you're gonna have to uh, share screen. Oh, this could be dangerous. <laughs> okay, bear with me. What you need to do is, is open it up um, so it's on your desktop and then go back and share screen and it should give you the choice of two or three things, whatever on your screen. And you click yeah. and you click on the document and then click on share. Well, it hasn't showed up to my uh, laptop yet. Oh. Marcia, could you forward that document to me also just so I have it, I can take a look at it separately. Yep. That's interesting. The iPad shows it was sent. So Marcia just sent it to me, and I can share my screen if you'd like me to do that. Excellent. And I didn't even lose you. <laughs> oh, this is the right one. How's that? Perfect. Okay, um, Mickey, if you would uh, go to full screen and um, eliminate the menu on the left, it will be more readable. Yeah. And click on uh, your Zoom button is down. I think it's down on the side. You want me to zoom in? Yeah, make it a little larger. 
please? Well, I don't know. I'd rather start and do a scroll. I'd rather introduce you to the different sections if I'm going to be. Okay. Yeah, Martha, why don't you go ahead and just tell me where, where you want me to go? Yeah. So as you can see, I've I've given a, a, a an introduction um, to this component of the plan. I've moved on from an introduction to what was the basis that was used for the analysis and the commentary. Um, you can continue to scroll. Um, there's a list of what we know about the area about regarding housing. And there's another list of what we need to know. It's followed by a, a short list of housing issues that have been identified um, without the support of data. And then I believe it's the last section are the goals and recommendations of which there are six, I think, if you scroll down. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the basic, but if we go back to the introduction, um, I felt it was important because to my understanding, anybody who reads our plan may not necessarily know Nantucket. And I also felt that with this particular housing component, that it really wasn't readily um, you know, aligning with what the Mass General Laws are asking us to do. Um, it's asking to analyze existing and forecasted housing needs and objectives, and and we just don't have that. Um, and so I was explaining um, where we're located, the size of what we're working with for the housing, and and I do describe the. Um, because in the objective, it's asking for programs for the preservation of housing. So there's the paragraph in the introduction, which says that, that we really do have a program that in itself is historic because I'm calling it the, the old historic district from 1955 and I, I always remember, which is probably now four years ago before COVID, when we were in the library at our meeting with Andrew Vorse and Leslie Snell, and they were talking about the updating of the entire master plan. We asked about a plan for for the downtown. And they said, Well, we don't we don't need one. We we have all the protection. And this is this is why I have specifically mentioned the HDC because the belief has been that the Historic District Commission was adequate protection for this area. And why would we need a master plan, a, a plan for our town area? Um, and then that last paragraph, it says, and I, I did get exact amounts, you know, so I understood that in our area, we have just over 400 acres of land. And I'm noting that it is largely considered to be built out with little or no buildable land. And so I've noted that I felt that the focus of the housing section really had to shift from how were we going to provide policies and strategies for more housing when we're already built out. Um, and so the next section is the basis for the analysis, which notes that in our town area that we have an amazing abundance of research, a wealth of research about the architectural history of all the homes, about people who lived in them. Um, but we know nothing about the people who live here now. Um, and the feeling that this lack of data doesn't allow us to quote, identify policies and strategies um, because we really mm -hmm. don't know 
who lives here and who doesn't live here. And that's why it goes into a short list of what we do know that was obtained from Nathan Porter about the number of parcels, the number of buildings, and a couple of statistics from um, the Fisher Real Estate Year in Review about what the property tax bills are and the number just that in 2023 alone, there were 69 real estate transactions in our area. The next section is that list of what we need to know in order to really answer the question about policy, which includes the demographics of who does live here and who lives here and how many year round, what are the age groups? These are items that I am aware in most uh, master plans are covered in an analysis of housing. That's followed by the list of housing issues that we have discussed um, without the benefit of knowing who really lives here, but our own observations. Some of the material is from our survey. And that follows with the goals and recommendations. For number one, I listed the quality of life challenges, which included strategy one, which was about noise from all sorts of different sources. I've tried to list many of them. Um, the second strategy was to improve sidewalk safety. And that wasn't just through the maintenance of the sidewalk itself, but about the enforcement of bylaws that would prohibit the, that do prohibit cars driving and parking on sidewalks. Um, you know, I've listed these various strategies in the in the goal of addressing quality of life. Um, the third strategy. Um, Mar Marsha, before you leave this, just uh, two quick ones. On behalf of Mary Ann, uh, where you list the sources of noise, um, and that would be strategy one one, if you could include uh, generators. Okay. Um, you just make a note because uh, I think Mickey's got the document, but you just make a note for yourself. And as you may recall, I'm not very fond of the word grandfathered. So where it says existing comma, uh, just insert legacy in place of grandfathered. Okay. Thank you. And when you're all done, I'm going to compliment you on, on a nice job. Well, <laughs> thank you. Um, right. So you see in that strategy three, where it's the, um, I added also, I, I put the encourage the reuse of existing of legacy, but then I also put new commercial uses. Um, so goal two is a little bit tricky and I'm sure we could have a, a long, long conversation about short-term rentals, but um, the strategy simply says to encourage restrictions on the business use of residential properties used as short-term rentals and noting that within our area, it in effect extends the commercial downtown and alters the character of its neighborhoods. So I don't really know if you all feel that it should be strengthened in some way and be more specific. I think, um, and perhaps it's rude of me to jump right in, Marsha, but I think it's well written. And I'm well aware that based on what happens in the special town meeting, the master plan itself, not our local area plan, but the master plan may address short-term rentals. And that'll be uh, to MPEDC and their consultants, how they want to um, phrase it. I think you've done a good job right here. I have no, I have no suggestion for change. Okay. Anyone else? 
No, I'm, I'm glad it's in there. I think it needs to be reinforced wherever we can. Yeah, I mean, I followed it from goal one being the more general area of quality of life, but it, it could have come in there, but I felt it ought to have its own separate goal. Um, goal number three lists a number of items that um, did come through some of the survey responses that we had different ways to encourage year-round use of the existing housing. Um, so they're very out there. I mean, they're a bit out there, um, the ideas. Um, but especially 3.4, we had a lot of comments about people that were interested in having some rental portions of their property, but were really hesitant and and uneasy with without knowing the legal and the zoning and understanding um, what the HDC would approve. So, and three point five is is pretty new. Do you know there's a whole website and I've met I've noted that the lease to locals program that started out by the Act Now group but then a week or so ago was given more financial support from the town. Um, so to me, that was a real opportunity um, to encourage the use of the existing housing. So Marsha, I'm raising my hand, but I defer to anybody else. I, I wanna speak in favor of 3.4. Great, thank you. Okay, M M Mickey will understand. When our house was rebuilt with um, Mickey as the architect, the cottage in the back was deemed a studio, not, um, not fit for human habitation. Uh, it has just been converted to a second dwelling and will be once we um, add a, a door and a few other um, things will be available for rental. We had to go through both planning board and, H, uh, and ZBA um, before HDC would even look at it. Uh, luckily, the um, consultant I had had a good enough plan that we went planning board, ZBA, HDC, and it's now in the hands of the building um, department. So. I think I'm saying it is complex and I'm not sure it needs to be if the town is in favor of it. Yeah, so maybe what you're saying is there needs to be another or added um, strengthening, you know, cause this is asking for, to provide the assistance but not to um, soften <laughs> or loosen up the regulations. Yeah. What do you well, think? I, I like the way the way you put it because uh, if these various boards are essentially in favor, things get smooth sailing. If they are not in favor, they get a lot of uh, any any application gets a lot of questions, a lot of pushback. Yeah, I think it's fine the way you have it, Marcia. Okay, thank you. So goal four is. Preservation of historic houses. There are three different strategies. Um, one, the first one is about the historic interiors that are have been continually at risk. The second one is really specific about providing professional HDC staff to review the, the applications coming from our area. Um, yeah, and the last one is about promoting preservation easements. Um, I understand that one, Marsha, and I'm going to ask Mickey, is uh, easement the correct uh, term 
or is it a um, like a conservation restriction? I think it, I think Eastman is correct. That's the term that um, I think the NPT uses when they when they um, help establish these. I I work with preservation easements a lot, Lee. Okay, it's, great. It's Thank correct. you. Um, so, um, out our way, um, Mrs. Whitney is selling a Moore's End, and uh, there are issues about historic wallpaper and things like that. Um, this was Mrs. Jared Coffin's house, where she said, Jared, I can't stand being so far out in the country. Right. Well, you know, I've noted in, in this strategy, both exterior and interior, because an exterior preservation easement is, is what is typical um, to do an interior preservation easement, like the house that is on Westchester, you know, the Jessica Woodle house on Westchester, that uh -huh. one had interior preservation easements that they really held up the sale for a long time, but they did finally get a buyer who felt they could concur, you know, and hold up the right. interior easements, but it's true. Um, um, and both the um, Preservation Trust and Mass Historical and the Sconson Trust hold preservation easements. It's super. So being goal number five is kind of to make myself stop complaining about the lack of data. <laughs> so <laughs> I finally thought, well, because I tried really hard last summer to get help on getting some more data about our area for housing. And then I thought, you know, this is, this is the work of a professional who needs to get in here um, and gather this data. Um, a professional study of the housing component. Um, I mean, we just know nothing and it's kind of, to me, it's for an area of an island that is so historic and so old, I, I feel it's almost kind of shameful that we just don't have access to information we don't know. And goal six, um, says that when year-round occupancy of a major and primary cultural resource, such as the residential downtown of Nantucket Island, has a mere one-third of its homes occupied as year-round residences, it's a serious threat to housing and to the preservation of this gateway as one of the island's primary cultural resources. And then I end it with a quotation from Housing Nantucket. Um, and I i mean, I, I know many of us live in town, but I definitely feel that it is in those winter months, it becomes a ghost town. And I don't think that that's particularly a healthy thing for a, a, the vitality of old historic district. It's kind of, yeah. Yeah. That's a kind of a challenging one to enforce though. I mean, you can't force people to buy houses and live downtown. Well, that's um, what this whole section's about was encouraging, encouraging yeah. them and trying to, and I felt, you know, as you and I worked together on so much of it, it was, it was really, really hard to figure out how do you possibly do that? Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know that any of the ideas are going to make a change, but I felt that, that it's kind of that I just put to recognize the decline because I don't think anybody sees that unless you live here and see how it empties out. Mm -hmm. I mean, right? That kind of awareness that if you're living downtown, you're likely surrounded by empty houses. You have you have one third of its homes occupied as year round. That sounds generous. I, 
You think it's that I know. <laughs> Thank you, Mickey, because that was a guess. <laughs> Without the data, that was definitely a guess. We can change it to one fourth if you think, because I think you're right. So we lost uh, power. We lost power quite a few years ago. And anyway, I called and uh woman answered, she goes, so we haven't had any other complaints. I said, well, there's only three of us on the street. Two of them are at work. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, and, 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 and to add to that, we have many people who are year-round residents, but three to four months of the year, they're somewhere else. So how, how, to, how to distinguish that from um, non-residential ownership is difficult. No, and that's why number five says we need to find this information and understand it. Yeah. How can we address any of this? But but Mickey, tell me what you think should be the amount that we're going to guess are occupied year round. I mean, I would say, I mean, 10%, 20%. I mean, it, you guys, you guys see it up more up closely than I do. But I wonder if the water company would keep records. They could tell just by usage, I would think. Well, you know, we have that um, address list of all of the properties in our area. I think that came from Nathan as well. And it would be easy enough to count the number of addresses that are outside of Nantucket, where they mail the tax bill. Mm -hmm. I think those addresses, I think the addresses are all on that list. You know, a few years ago, I can't remember, I should remember his name. Um, it was Alan, I can't remember his last name. Yes, Alan, I asked him, Alan Warden, right? Warden, yeah. O-R-D-E-N, I asked him for information. And what'd you get? Nothing. Oh. He didn't have it either. No. Oh. Because he was monitoring sewer use, water use, things like that. And yeah, and then I, I spoke um, today to Cleary Larkin, the director of Preservation Nantucket, and she said she was getting up some information that they, you know, the survey that they did, Preservation Institute University of Florida did a survey this spring. I think most of us probably would have answered it. Um, but she said they had over 700 responses. And that, but whether it answers these questions, I don't know. But, you know, with all the feasibility studies and all the work that, that gets funded by our taxes by the town, I mean, I don't know that that's a huge amount of, of funding required to do number five. But it's to me, it's the beginning of learning about the area and what what we can offer, what we can do about it. I I, I tend to like the document um, very specifically, the one third, um, because it's difficult to distinguish ownership versus occupancy. Um, the ownership may be uh, a mass resident but the house may still be vacant. So checking things like water usage and so forth will tell us whether or not people are at home, but it doesn't tell us um, who uh, who actually owns it. That comes from things like the street list, Mary Ann's list. But it, yeah. well, it would give us a, a, the number of uh, residences that are being used on a year-round basis, which could be important too. Yeah. And how do you get that, Mickey? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe perhaps the water company, you know, they I mean, I know that when I went away fairly recently and I had left the house vacant for a year at a time, my water bill was the same as when I was here living. And I kept saying, How could I be spending fifty dollars a month when I'm not even here? Because the said, because the 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 bulk of our water bills are the uh, connection charges. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know that that would work. Well, they, they have, 
they they have meters and they read the meters. So even yeah, though no, they could... would know the volume, there's no question about that. It's it's not the dollar amount; it's the um, gallonage, right? Well, and the new meters are all uh, what do I want to say radio controlled, right? Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that if one hires a professional, they know how to get all this data, mm -hmm. and they know how to do it efficiently compared to me. I wonder if we could actually call the Wanakama Water Company and ask them if they have a quick way of developing this data. You know, they could mm -hmm. sort their lists and see which ones are being used mm -hmm. certain months. We did, we'd have to give them like a street list of the area, I would think. You're right. Well, yeah. Well, you know, we have the map and, hmm. Yeah, I wonder if Nathan could pull something off. Hmm. Well, Nathan, I sent everybody that list of um, all of the people in our area. You should all have gotten that in your intray mm -hmm. email. Hello. That was a long time ago. Sorry, yeah, yeah. It's like it I'm... was only a couple of months ago, and it was literally um, property by property, a list. No, well, I... you could tell us about the. Property. Well, that could be given to the water company because a map won't help them at all. Because they'd have to figure out every street. No, I'm 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 going to suggest that we not get too involved in this. I think Marianne's list should be attached perhaps as an appendix to our report and um hand it over to them. We as amateur volunteers are not necessarily equipped or have the time and we're also horribly late in turning in a report. Identifying it as a key issue, yes. Suggesting how we might get to the number, yes. Doing it ourselves, probably not. Maybe uh, on that near one third of homes, put a question mark. Yeah, maybe I put a mere one third or less. Yes. A okay. mere one third or less. Anything else? No, I, I'll stop sharing. OK. And I will, for the record, since we are being recorded, thank Marsha for a, a, a very fine report. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. I agree. So thorough. Thank you, Marsha. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. I was late, and it took some thinking. Good thinking. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, Henry, I will point out that the latest version has got edits from Allison King and um, Reagan Horchow. Allison has a few questions in her portion. It's it, it's well written, it's well edited, and then all of a sudden it says the work group should decide what it is we want to ask. Do you want to bring that up? And then I can try. Screen share? Yeah. I can try. So the first thing I'm going to do is check what's yes, okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is Share screen and there we go. There we have it. And now what I need to do. Let's see if this works. There we go.
Uh, I'm blocking something and I can make it smaller. There we go. And those are the uh, questions. I'll give you a second to read them. What is the category that we're looking at here? Oh, good question. Oh. Econ economic development, I believe. It's oh, okay. category four. Okay. So her first question reminds me that the town has not a bylaw, but somewhere in its regular uh, in its regulations a list of streets and size and width of the tourist buses so that uh, the bigger buses can't go through the narrowest streets. In other words, we have asked an, ec an economic sector to consider best practice for, small, uh, for, for vehicles on small streets. Um, I would comment having passed one of those gigantic buses on New Lane that I think they should not be allowed on Nantucket. They're just too big, period. And I can't yeah. imagine somebody running a business on Nantucket do, using something like that. It's, it was a Barrett's Tours bus that was just too overwhelming for this tiny island. Yeah, they've got two of them. Oh. And, and 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 they they have their restrictions, and New Lane is just not one of the restricted streets. Oh, I thought that they did restrict the size of those buses, but they had purchased the ones they have prior to that change. Yeah, uh, I ba Barrett may have bought new buses, but that that old one was huge. Yeah, but that's not what we're arguing about, or, or not arguing, discussing. Uh, it's just that there is a precedent for asking the town to control large vehicles on narrow streets. You know, I don't know whether um, this reference to construction, the construction and maintenance industry is, um, to me, it's more of an issue of multiple vehicles compared to um, too large. I mean, trying to go down this summer, go down Pleasant Street, either way, has just been in multiple vehicles that were working on that house. And I don't know that it was the size as much as all the different trades in the construction yeah. work that just filled the street. This house got gutted and uh, is in the process of re being rebuilt. There's at least, I'd say, eight to ten trucks a day just on that one house. Uh, and they they park on yellow lines, they park in handicap, and the, the specials can't keep up with them. Where, where is this, Henry? Which house is it? Four Gay Street. Bob and Nina Hellman's old place. Okay. Yeah, oh my yeah. ass. Yeah. That got sold and completely gutted. You know, and I mean, I've heard from people that trying to think where it was that um, have had a house under renovation next to them this summer. And it's constant, constant noise. Yeah, I've got it right here. He's about 100 feet from me. Right. I mean, it just ruins. I mean, and... Well, they set up a, a saw station on the um, what used to be the front porch, uh, and there's nothing I could do about it. And, the, and it turns out the saws weren't bad, but the planers and the uh, routers, I mean, it's all day long. Yeah. I it's thought a, this in, in construction was not allowed um, from June to September. 
Well, apparently it's case by case. Um, yeah, it, 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 it all, there is no regulation. It's all within the language of the building permit as issued by the building commissioner. Okay. When, when uh, they bought the music school, um, a bunch of the neighbors got together as we were contesting what they wanted to do. But we had provisions built right in for hours of work, uh, no exterior work during the summer other than painting and landscaping. And so when a project goes in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals, they'll almost always add that restriction for densely populated areas. But, but I don't think there's any mechanism to get it on a building permit. Otherwise, if you're meeting all the requirements, you don't go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, so it doesn't get added. Yeah, my understanding was that it was only covered if it was um, a major commercial development. And then there were restrictions built in. Mm -hmm. But I don't know why. Um, and I don't know if it's part of this component of the economic development. But yeah, this is really a quality of life issue, Marsha, isn't it? It is. And I listed that. I listed the noise from construction. But I see it feel like from our discussion, it needs to be strengthened and more specific. We need to say, you know, take like whatever you put, Henry, into that agreement and, and put that into um, a strategy, a really specific strategy. This is difficult because I do live on a narrow street and when I'm getting a propane delivery, nobody can go past. Um, if the FedEx truck stops, they might be able to get past, typically not. And these are not construction or maintenance uh, vehicles. No. Not, 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 not to mention Santos's garbage truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I want to just go back to touch upon what could be a strategy for what we've been talking about with construction projects, because I know that um, all of the work for 10 years in restoring the Museum of African American History on York Street, every single one of the contracts that I wrote for the contractors and the subs, I included that there was to be no noise. I included the hours. And, and even if they were inside the structure doing interior work, you know, in the contract, it said they were not to be broadcasting music. Um, and so, I mean, it makes me wonder whether or not we could um, approach the designers, architects, construction companies and make that specific request because they're the ones that are overseeing the work. I can't believe that's gonna be very successful. I think Sorry. a bylaw might be. I think it has to be more teeth than no, just- No, I asking. mean, if we started putting ratings upon the different companies and the projects for how disturbing it was to their environment, maybe they would pay attention, Mickey. Well, where's that rating posted? How do you handle that system? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure that we can afford the legal fees. No, but we're just making recommendations, correct? Yeah. I think I think that there might be a, a more effective way through building the building permit process. And I, you know, they can't stop people from doing work on their house at any time of year. Some sometimes you just need to do the work, but they might be able to limit maybe the number of vehicles, you know, at the house or the number of workmen in the building, possibly, I don't know. But there might be, you know, some forms of limitations that could be enforced. Um, most, you know, a lot of the people that buy a house and they schedule to get their permits, you know, they try to get them all ready so they can start in the fall, but Quite often, it takes all winter and then some to finish the project, and they're still working in the in you know June and July to mm -hmm. get their clients in. 
and they're not going to be happy about being restricted to um, totally shutting down a job. Well, this uh, I guess work I'm, by me started right before Thanksgiving. I think I'm feeling that the quality of life strategy section in in housing should have another another item that's specifically and if you could write something up Mickey and let me know what and we can talk about what we could offer for specific okay. strategies either yeah. through the plus department or however construction noise limits or time of time of year limits there's there's quite a bit in the bylaws on noise um so then we're probably talking about enforcement right henry yeah the uh basically from i it was months ago when i read it you're supposed to call the police i mean they're they've got set hours um, for construction and uh, even homeowners. Yeah, essentially enforcement is by complaint. Yeah, there are decibel limit numbers that, that I think are listed somewhere in the bylaws. But they used to be, um, Chief Pittman wouldn't enforce it. I went through this with the Rose and Crown for, I don't know how many months. Um, Amy Baxter was the best solution. Uh, when you call into the police department with a complaint, they track it. And then when the, say the Rose and Crown went to renew their license, she had the list of complaints. And it's either, you know, tone it down or we're gonna go through a big review. And it worked. Yeah. Uh, in, in light of the hour. Could I just come back to economic development for just a minute before we close? Sure. <laughs> no, I was I not going to close, Marianne. Um, and if, if I may, and then definitely your turn. Um, I liked Marsha's suggestion to Mickey that they take some of this material from Alison King's question and convert it into statements in the quality of life part of housing. Um, as opposed to trying to edit this little paragraph. So that's my suggestion. And Marianne, now, please, your suggestion. My understanding is that this yellowed document is about economic development. Yes. And I wondered if um, we shouldn't recognize Remain Nantucket for insisting that the businesses that they support remain open year round. That has been very effective. Without that, I don't think we would have these businesses open year round and they kind of anchor downtown in the winter months. Oh, that's excellent. I think it's an excellent suggestion. Yes. And I don't know how, you know, the town hasn't done anything to make rules and regulations, but maybe a private organization like Remain can do that. And they certainly have done it effectively. Yeah, maybe we could get a statement, you know, a quotation from their mission um, and say, you know, we need to support more of that. But that would be in this section, right? The economic. Yeah, this is like, this is not your section on housing, but I was thinking yeah. of economic development. And there are other um, organizations that are like anchors downtown that bring people downtown year round, no matter what. One of them being the Athenaeum for sure. Um, and there must be other, well, the people come down for the Athenaeum, for the post office, uh, for the businesses yeah. that remain required to be open. So I was just trying to think of how the downtown can remain um, economically viable. The Whaling mm -hmm. Museum, I guess, does not close for many months in the year. So people come down for that. I think it's very tricky in this section because remember, 
the commercial downtown and all those not businesses ours. Yeah. are not ours. Yeah. We well, it's, so it's owned, it's, at least it used to be owned by, you know, a large part of it was owned by Sherburne Associates, which became Winthrop. And then I don't know who's taken over Winthrop's portfolio of, the, of all the downtown, not the waterfront, but the downtown properties. No, Nantucket properties. Island Resorts, NIR. Yeah, Thank, thank you, Marianne. Definitely at uh, the CARP group. Yeah. So, you know, this may seem like a big reach, but maybe you could require multiple business, you know, businesses that own multiple properties to have a certain percentage of their properties open on a year on basis within our district or within the commercial downtown, I guess. But actually, we're talking about. We're talking Would about the chamber downtown. have something to do. Would the chamber have something to do with that? Oh, perhaps, but that would be more voluntary, I would think. Well, it used to be, you know, the restaurants took turns who was open, who was closed in the winter. Yeah, yeah. And that always worked <clears throat> informally. I don't know if it still does. I don't know, things get pretty quiet around here in the winter, uh, <laughs> including born and bred. They do shut down in the winter. But they only shut down for a certain period of time that um, that remain allows them to shut down. Yeah, but it's over a month. And then yeah, uh, no, that's not too they're bad. not open on Mondays, I believe. Right. No, I think that all of this is really important to put in, however we can develop it into a strategy, but it's really important. I remember yeah. there was an article by Chris Perry in the Nantucket Current, and it was this spring where he he really was, um, he researched different restaurants and, and really gave a lot of attention and praise to um and had quotations from the owners of different restaurants and really praising them for staying open year round and how important it was for their employees and to have a year round um and i don't know i just think we should look at it because it's it's outside of our area but it's it it's the support for our area of people living yeah. here. It is, I agree. Well, so we I'm got a couple to, minutes. I, so we I, need to I'm gonna suggest, up. I'm gonna ask, not suggest. Marsha, did you wanna add a few more things to your document before I um, send it out? Yes, I think Mickey, Mickey Wright, you and I'll work on that other construction noise, specifically regulations. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at that. And there's something else that I might throw in, too, that I was thinking of putting into a different section. But I'll talk to you about that, Marcia, before. Um, okay. And soon as soon as I get it, I'll, uh, I will recirculate. Now, the thing with Allison's material, she's not online. Um, Henry, what do you think we should do? Um, we can come up with suggestions, send them to her, and then revise. Okay. I'll see what I can do with minutes. They may not be out till Monday. That's fine. Um, so if, if you can do the revisions, though, um, I want as to soon as, as soon as I get material for the draft report, that's the work of minutes. I just paste it in and send it out. But to uh, uh, to actually compose the minutes and suggested language, that may take me a little longer. Yep. I just want to have something to give to Leslie on Monday. Oh, I understand. And we'll so, see what happens from then. Lee, I have one small question or suggestion in the full document that you've been preparing, which is really probably on the second page where you list the members of our group. And I just wondered if you might consider taking the different people that are no longer with us and maybe have them as a separate list and put their dates of service because, you know, they're no longer writing the document. They're no longer working. 
and it is it just a little confusing um so if you had a list where you you knew you know that liz and mary um you know i thought it was on the beginning of each section uh no my marsha's got a point and um I think they should be noted for their participation. And I think at the same time, it should be made clear that they're not part of the final submission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somehow. Yep. I'll see what I can do. OK, thank you. OK, I have 501. Anything else? Nope. OK, motion to adjourn. Marshall. I move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Nikki That's and Marianne and who? I Nikki. think Nikki was first, and I said I second it. Okay. I've got. Have a quiet weekend. All right. Uh, Thank you, everyone. In my, in my house, this is known as the sundowner. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so long. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Henry. Yep, I just got to figure out how to get us out of here. There we go.